हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज प्रतिमा एंड यू आर वॉचिंग प्लानिट फिजियोलॉजी टूडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग ए शॉर्ट बट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन रीनल फिजियोलॉजी ट्रांसपोर्ट मैक्सिमम और टिबुलर ट्रांसपोर्ट मैक्सिमम विच मेनी स्टूडेंट्स फाइंड डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड सो लेट्स बिगिन ट्रांसपोर्ट मैक्सिमम इज बेस्ड ऑन द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सैचुरेशन काइनेटिक्स ऑफ कैरियर मीडिएटेड ट्रांसपोर्ट it means that as the number of solid particles to be transported increases the rate of transport also increases initially but soon it attains its maximum value as indicated by the plateau in this figure this is called as vmax if you want to refresh this knowledge link is provided in the description box below okay with this background let's study the tubular transport maximum in detail tubular transport maximum is defined as maximum rate at which a particular substance can be actively transported by the renal tubules beyond this value the substance is excreted and appears in the urine transport maximum is due to saturation of carrier proteins by the solutes theoretically all the substances which are actively reabsorbed or secreted exhibit transport maximum for example glucose phosphate sulfate amino acid uric acid lactic acid creatinine and para amino hippuric acid the value of transport maximum depends on tubular load of a given substance so tubular load is nothing but the amount of substance filtered by the nephrons in each minute thus tubular load depends on glomerular filtration rate and plasma concentration of the substance we can calculate it by multiplying gfr by plasma concentration of the substance since glucose is very important solute which exhibits transport maximum we shall discuss this topic further with reference to glucose transport maximum for glucose is abbreviated as tmg let's find out how much is the tubular load of glucose in a normal person so normal gfr is 125 ml per minute and blood glucose level ranges between 80 to 120 mg per deciliter let's assume blood glucose level to be 100 mg per deciliter now convert this value to mg per ml to match the units of gfr and blood glucose so it becomes 1 mg per ml hence tubular load of glucose is 125 multiplied by 1 that is 125 mg per minute it means in each minute 125 mg of glucose is filtered by the nephrons when glucose level in the blood is 100 mg per deciliter now if you see the normal value of transport maximum for glucose it is 375 mg per minute which is way beyond the tubular load of glucose hence the entire filtered glucose is reabsorbed back into the blood by proximal convoluted tubule it means there is 100% glucose reabsorption by the tubules tmg is 300 mg per minute in case of females and 375 mg per minute in case of males whenever tubular load of glucose is greater than tmg glucose cannot be reabsorbed completely and some glucose starts appearing in the urine resulting in glycosuria or glucosuria this can happen whenever there is rise in gfr or blood glucose level or both so let's find out how much should be the blood glucose level to achieve tubular load equal to tmg if gfr remains 125 ml per minute we already know the formula for tubular load so substitute the values in it we want tubular load to be 375 mg per minute gfr is 125 ml we are finding out plasma glucose so 375 divided by gfr that is 125 it gives you plasma glucose concentration which is 3 mg per ml we convert it to routine unit so it is 300 mg per deciliter of the blood so it means that when blood glucose level becomes 300 mg per deciliter tubules reach to their maximum limit for reabsorption 
and this value is termed as renal threshold so renal threshold for glucose is defined as blood glucose level at which glucose first appears in the urine so as we have seen just now ideally renal threshold should be 300 mg per deciliter but actually it is much lower which is 200 mg per deciliter of arterial blood since routinely we measure values in venous blood renal threshold in terms of venous blood is 180 mg per deciliter so the difference between ideal and actual renal threshold is called as splay i repeat the difference between ideal and actual renal threshold is called as splay the relationship between blood glucose filtered load of glucose its reabsorption and excretion is shown in this graph x axis has plasma glucose level y axis represents filtered load of glucose glucose reabsorption as well as glucose excretion so first observe this red line which represents tubular load of glucose as blood glucose level increases filtered load of glucose also increases in linear fashion now you observe this blue line which represents reabsorption of glucose by pct now this curve is similar to that of vmax and here plateau starts at the level of 300 mg per deciliter of plasma glucose concentration in arterial blood now let's see what happens to excretion of glucose as filtered load increases rate of glucose reabsorption also increases initially and no glucose is excreted but when blood glucose level crosses the value of 200 mg per deciliter small quantity of glucose appears in the urine the amount of glucose excreted increases with increase in blood glucose level and once the blood glucose crosses the value of 300 mg glucose excretion becomes parallel to that of filtered load of glucose it means the amount of glucose excreted becomes equal to its filtered load minus tmg the curved part of this graph represents splay this splay is because tmg of all the nephrons is not same so as represented by this picture some nephrons have tmg of 220 mg per minute some have value of 250 still some others have 300 mg some have 375 mg per minute hence the nephrons with lower tmg begins to excrete glucose before the others reach their transport maximum overall value of 375 mg per minute is reached when all the nephrons reach to their transport maximum for glucose hence during splay glucose appears in the urine from the nephrons with lower tmg value here is a table indicating transport maximum for various solutes and you may wonder even though sodium is actively reabsorbed why is it missing from the list the main reason is that other factors limit the reabsorption rate of sodium besides the maximum rate of active transport for example in proximal tubules the maximum transport capacity of sodium potassium pump is usually far greater than the actual rate of net sodium reabsorption because significant amount of sodium transported out of the cell leaks back into the tubular lumen through the epithelial tight junctions this rate of back leak depends on permeability of tight junctions as well as starling's forces acting at the peritubular capillary level therefore sodium transport in proximal tubules obeys mainly gradient time transport principle rather than transport maximum principle in distal parts of the nephron tight junctions are really very tight they are less leaky and here sodium transport exhibits transport maximum but even this maximum value can be raised by the hormones like aldosterone so this is all about transport maximum let us summarize important facts of this session transport maximum is based on the principle of saturation kinetics of the carrier protein glucose is the main solute which exhibits transport maximum tmg in males is 375 and females is 300 mg per minute 
glycosuria occurs whenever tubular load becomes greater than TMG value. Renal threshold for glucose is 200 mg per deciliter in terms of arterial levels and 180 mg per deciliter in terms of venous levels. The difference between the ideal and the actual renal threshold is splay. And sodium, in spite of being transported actively, does not show transport maximum. So that's all for this session. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. If you enjoy my presentations, Press the like button and share it with your friends. For more such videos, subscribe my channel and click the bell icon. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.